These are my top 10 features about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad that you should know about. Hey, and welcome to this series because I will create a couple of videos about my top 10 features. This is part one and I'm Daniel. Welcome to my channel. This channel is all about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Let's start with this compilation number one. In this video, I will show you one of the coolest shortcuts that you can use in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad that doesn't even exist in Premiere Pro. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the shortcut, delete all gaps. Just one click, boom, all of the gaps in my timeline are gone. To get this shortcut, you have to do the following. Open the shortcuts menu, option, command, and K. And then here under search, you have to search for delete gap. And then you find this one, delete gaps. By default, there is no shortcut to this one. You just give it a shortcut and then you can start using the shortcut like I showed you. Boom, gone. Amazing. In this video, I will show you one of the best functions that you can use. It's called Fit to Fill in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. So if we have a timeline here and we have music and we want to bring stuff into our timeline, but let's say we want to have it on a specific point. Let's say we want to have an in point here and until here we have time, boom. And everything we have in our media bin, let's say for example, the shot here, I want this shot is way longer, but I want that this long shot is now already changed in speed so it matches exactly what I selected here. Is there a way to do it? Yes, and it's called fit to fill. It's basically one of the functions that you have here, but for that one, you don't have an icon. This is how you can already tell this is an advanced technique. So you have to come to the shortcuts menu, option, command, and K. And if you look here for search, search for fit to fill. And by default, you have it on Shift and F11. So if you're using a regular keyboard, you can use just Shift and 11. If you use a magic keyboard like I do, I don't have the function keys. So I have to give it a second shortcut and I just gave it Option, Shift and 0. And now if I, for example, come in here and I have to do the following. I have to put an in and an out point on my timeline. So let's say from here to here. And then I have to go into my footage and select an in and an out point from my footage, let's say from here, all the way, oh wait, from, from here, all the way to here. So now this clip is way longer, but if I now hit the keyboard shortcut, so option shift and zero, or F11. And now you see, if we zoom in here, if you look at this little icon here, this shows us that the, the speed of the clip was adjusted. So all of that, what we saw before is now, yeah, already playing in this one. This is a very cool function and that can make you faster so you don't have to drag and drop everything to the timeline and change the speed afterwards. You can immediately fill what is the rest of your clip in the timeline. Today, I will show you how you can sync audio and video all together with just one button in DaVinci Resolve for your iPad. I have my three clips here. One is from my main camera with the Rode microphone, and then I have a screen recording with the podcast microphone, and I also had a video mic. All at the same time, same setting. You go to the edit page and you drag all of your clips here to the timeline. Then also the third audio. So, and what you can do now is you can actually highlight all of the clips and now right click if you have the magic keyboard it's just two finger click or if you don't have a keyboard let's do this again you can use your finger and just longer press on the clip and you see here auto align clips and now we don't want to do the time code because i didn't record it with time code but we can based on waveform click this and boom DaVinci did all the magic for us. Did you know that you can actually have two timelines, even DaVinci Resolve for the iPad? I will show you this, how this works. So in order to make this work, we have to go to the edit page. When you are in the edit page, you can come here to this icon. And when you activate this first one, now you can actually add a couple of different timelines here, like a new timeline. But if you come to this icon here, you can now make a second timeline here. So now I can tell in the top one, I want to have this timeline. And in the bottom one, let's say I want to start a complete new timeline and work here as well. If you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, I created a masterclass just for you. A masterclass for the iPad from beginner to pro where I teach you everything about DaVinci Resolve. I mean really everything. This is the most advanced 
class that is out there and I teach you from a beginner so you don't need any knowledge about DaVinci Resolve before. This is a Hollywood-like software and we can do so many features with that software. I will give you also a lot of bonuses. This masterclass is like the biggest masterclass that is out there for the iPad. So if you want to create better videos, then this masterclass is definitely for you. So in this video, I will show you how you can copy one color grade in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad to multiple clips, especially if you don't have a keyboard. So the problem is when you have a keyboard, it's actually very simple. I show you. I'm here in the color page and, and if I have a keyboard, I can just select a clip here, hit shift on my keyboard and select multiple clips. But the problem, if you don't have a keyboard, you cannot hit shift. So how can you do this if you wanna hit shift here? Yes, there's a workaround. You can use your smartphone with a Bluetooth keyboard. Yeah, but sometimes you don't use this. It's it's a little bit ugly. So how can you do this? And is there a workaround? And there actually is. You can go to the edit page. I prepared something here for already. Here, for example, all those green clips, those, they don't have a color grade. And here on the blue one, I have a couple of different options of color grading. And I really like, let's say, that orange and teal look here from that clip. So what I can do, I can longer press right click on this clip and say, copy. And now I can use my pencil and select all of those clips here and longer press on a clip and then say paste attributes. So what I do now here is I deselect everything else except color correction. And when I do apply, all of my color gradings are now applied to those clips. Here I show you. When I go through this, all of them which were locked before, low profile, they have now this color grading on it. And if we go to the color page, you will even see that all of those clips now have all of our notes. That is the most important because when we copy something, we want to have those notes, right? And just in case if you don't even know how to copy them in the first place, I will show you this because I thought you maybe know, but let's say you did your color correction. Like this one is the color correction with all of my notes and now you have a couple of clips you want to apply a grade. How can you do this? There's two ways. Way number one, you select a clip that has no color grade on it and then you right click on a clip that has a color grade on it. So you do this, right click and then you say apply grade. And now what it does, it uses all of those notes with the correction and applies it to this one. And the second way you can do this, let's return this one, nothing here. You can also go to the clip with your color grade that you really like and then say right click on the viewer and then say grab still. And what it does now, it saved a copy of that one color grade. And if you go here to the gallery, you will see that we just saved this color grade here. And so how can I apply this one now? Same like before, I can select this clip here and say right click in here, apply grade. And now you apply this grade. And obviously let's return this one again. If you have a keyboard, you could now select a couple of clips, like let's say, let's say we select all of those and I could use all the different steels that I saved. Let's say for example here, I played around with my jacket a bit and say, right click, apply grade. And now you see it, it changed the color grading in those ones. So now I have my pink jacket in here as well. Hey guys, in this video, I want to show you one of the coolest features of DaVinci Resolve for the iPad and it's called Detect Scene Cuts. It's one of the new features since update 18.5. And you can be now here on the cut page. And when you go to this icon and click it, you actually see a couple of different options that you have here. So I have a trailer that I put into the timeline with lots of cuts and different things, right? And I can now select detect scene cut. And what it's doing now for me is automatically inspecting the video and seeing every cut that it finds. And if we look now here, look at my timeline. All of those cuts were done automatically. Now you see where there are cuts in my video. You don't have to do it yourself. In this video, I will give you a super cool trick how you can get your lost audio back from your frame. I'm talking about match frame. So what am I talking about? Let's say I have a clip here. This is the original clip and I drag this to my timeline and I already did my cuts and everything, right? So then I have only this piece here. And so for whatever reason, I lose my audio. So now like, oh no, now I have to go back. Where is my, ah, how can I get the audio back from when I just deleted it? So you can do the following. That is the icon for match frame. So I select this here, then I go to match frame. And what it will do is now on my original clip, if I now double click this one and look in the viewer, it automatically set an in point and an out point for that. So now I can just grab the audio and get this one back here. Super simple, but very helpful. In this video, I will show you how you can drag a clip longer without even touching all the other clips afterwards. Very simple in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. If you are in the edit page and you have like, let's say a bunch of clips here and instead of selecting everything and moving them to the right and now extending everything, there's actually a faster way how you can do this. So if you are in the edit page, you can change this to the trim mode here. And so if I now go to the end of my clips, so here, not the middle of my clips, the 
the end of my clip, I can now select this and move it to the right and to the left. And the same is working in the cut page. And here it works the same without even changing any editing mode. You can select in between, then you move the cut line in between. But if you select a little bit more to the left, like I touch with my pencil somewhere here, like this. Now I can move and if you look here on the top timeline, everything to the right is now moving to the right as well. In this video, I will show you the power of compound clip. You don't know what compound clip is? I show you. If you have a couple of different clips, let's say for example here, I have a background, I have my logo and I have a logo name and I want to combine them all to one clip. I can just select all of them in the edit page and then just right click and say here, new compound clip. And what it does, you can now say a name for that new compound clip and I say Phoenix logo and create. And now you see, instead of having three different ones, I have now one clip, one clip that I can take, drag around, make it smaller, cut it, everything like a normal clip you can do with this one clip. But now whatever you do with this, all of the adjustments, all of the changes will always go to this one clip. And not only that, if you actually look here into the media pool, we have now something a new complete clip, it's called Phoenix logo. So even if I delete this one here and I drag and drop this down, I have my compound clip. You wanna change something later? No problem, you can always go back inside of this and change, rearrange by just right click on it and then say, for example, here, open in timeline. So now we see all of them. And if you notice here on the bottom, we see now that we are inside of timeline one, Phoenix logo. So we can select this one. Let's say, for example, we wanna make the logo bigger. I can go in here and zoom the logo bigger, maybe like this. So if I wanna go out, I can just go now here on the bottom and click on timeline one, double click, and I'm back to my original timeline. And everything that I now did is changed to this one. So what can you do with those compound clips? You can do everything with it. You can put effects on it, transition on it. You can color grade it at one thing. Let's say for example, I grab this shot here and let's say we grab this one and just make everything smaller. I can come in here in the inspector, and make everything smaller. Let's place this maybe somewhere here on the corner. And now I could look for an effect called drop shadow. So I can go into open effects and look for drop shadow. I can select this one on top of this one. And now my clip even has a drop shadow. And if at one point you don't want to have the compound clip anymore, you can also just click it, right click, and then say decompose in place using clips only. And boom, you're back here. But not only that, even if you now have this with all of your clips, you can now go back here in the media pool, you still have the compound logo. So you can still drag and drop the compound logo with all the settings you had here. One more thing if you add transitions to your compound clip. Let's say we drag this here in the middle from that clip here to this clip to this one. Let's say we wanna have a transition here. Go back to the cut page, transition, and we will place any transition here. You will realize that you can't put the transition in between both of them. Why? Because we don't have enough meat from the beginning and the, and the end. It's the same like with any transition. If the clip is the maximum, you can't do it. So what could you do? You could click the compound effect and just go in here and open in timeline. And for example, just drag and drop everything and make it longer. And now when you go back, you have more meat. You can select this icon here and now go to the top part of this clip and just drag it to the left or to the right. And if you have enough meat, you will see this now here with this icon. You will now see this here that you see how long the complete clip is. If you go too much to the left, it's the end here. So we have enough space here in between left and right. Now we can go to the effects and drag and drop an effect even in the middle of both clips. So I would encourage you just play around with compound effects because you can do a lot of things always thinking about that you could put everything that you did just in a compound clip. Hey guys, in this video I wanna talk about one feature that blew me away for DaVinci Resolve 19 here on the iPad and we can use this on the iPad. And the funny thing is, this is a feature that is not even included in the list. If we come here to the App Store and we look at the 19 update in my video that is an hour long I talk about all the features and I explain you every single feature of these and the one from today is available in DaVinci Resolve 19 and it's even in the desktop version but they don't include it here but we have access to it even in the cut page and even in the edit page so if you have an audio track let's say for example from Epidemic Sounds I take my music most of the time from Epidemic Sounds if you're a YouTuber and you want to think about using music you should definitely check out Epidemic Sounds there's a link here in the description and they have all kinds of different sorts of music. If I take this music track here, for example, and I bring this in to my timeline here in the cut page to audio track two, by the way, you can always expand the audio here with this little icon here. So then you see more even in the cut page. So you don't need to open the edit page and come in the edit page and uh, make it bigger here. You can actually do this in the cut page. And the feature I'm talking about today is called audio remixing. If we click on this audio track and we come here into the inspector, 
Under the inspector, you will find here the audio tab. And then when we scroll down, there is a new thing. It's called Music Remixer. If you activate this one, and what you can do with this, if you ever used those kind of websites where you can download music, many times these websites offer different versions of the music. One version is the full song with voice, drums, everything. Then sometimes, and not every song makes this, but sometimes you can choose just the drums, just the voice, or different versions of it. But you don't have to do this anymore. You can basically bring in the song. So let's check out the song. It even has voice here in it. So, and when we activate the music remixer, we have a couple of sliders and it's the AI in the background that will help us to isolate these kind of channels. So for example, I can remove the voice just by taking this, taking it off. Let's re-listen to what we just listened here. Normally there's voice, let's activate this again. Or for example, if you just wanna have the drums, I could turn all of the other things out and only listen to the drums. This is fucking insane, really. This is amazing that we have something like this and we can use this on an iPad just on the go. I mean, this is a feature, to be honest, I will not use it all of the time, but sometimes there's music track where I don't like the voice and I can remove the voice without looking for another track or something. I can just use here the AI and it's working really well. Play around with this. It's already included in every music track. You can just have to come up here to the inspector on the audio and activate music remixer and play around with this. So this was my top 10 feature list, part number one. Definitely check out part number two. I will link this one here on the screen so you learn even more about DaVinci Resolve. And if you want to go a step further, check out the masterclass about DaVinci Resolve that I created. There will be a link in the description. See you in the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.